Hey everybody, it's Grady at Twin Creek Audio. I'm back in the studio today to continue a little bit with the signal flow that I talked about in the last video. Today I'm going to get into a lot more about the auxiliary sends and the inserts on the console and also go into more detail as to why those monitoring channels exist. Why do you have main channels and monitor channels on a recording console? So let's get into some of the interesting diagrams that I've made and some photos to explain this a little bit better. Talked about this a little bit in the last video, but the tape returns or monitor channels on a console exist so that you can create an independent mix from what's going to tape over here on the main channels. Now different consoles do this different ways, like the Soundcraft Sapphire that I have, the smaller faders on top are the channel faders that are sending to tape, and then the big faders are used for the tape returns or monitor channels. So, you know, it's made for mixing and made for being able to hear what you want to hear while you're recording without affecting what's going on to the different tracks of tape or converters or whatever it is that you have. So the reason recording consoles have separate monitor channels and separate main channels is because you've got to have a way to hear the performance. The musicians need to be able to hear themselves and the engineer needs to be able to hear what's going on to tape. So the monitor channels are there so that you're not having to adjust levels on your main channels for one thing and also to avoid, you know, having to fix that later in the mix. If you're adjusting the level so the musicians can hear on your main channels, then your level going to tape is not going to be consistent. And you know, you set those levels in the beginning, what if the performer wants to hear themselves louder and you turn them up and then all of a sudden you're clipping tape or you know, clipping the converter, something like that. So that's why you have a separate monitor section on a console. Those monitor channels are there so that you can hear what's being recorded without affecting what's going to tape or the converter, depending on how you record. So if we look at the channel strip, of course you've got the EQ and the input section up here and then the insert. Some consoles have the insert pre-EQ and some of them are post-EQ. The insert is going to send the entire signal that's coming down the channel out to the insert device of your choice, usually that's going to be a compressor or an EQ, and then it comes back in to the insert and then continues on its merry way down the channel. Auxiliary sends work differently. The auxiliary send takes a split of the signal from that channel, sends it off to the auxiliary master, but it also continues on its way down to the routing and fader section of the console. From the auxiliary master, then it goes out to an external effects device over here, or auxiliary sends can also be used to build headphone mixes. If it does go out to an effects unit, then it needs a way to bring the output of that effects unit back to the console. Usually that's an effects return or a spare console input. Whatever you send off to a processing device or, you know, if it's a headphone mix, obviously you're not getting that back anywhere, but if you're, if you're sending an AUG send off to a processing device, that processing device's output is going to have to return somewhere else on the console. But that's a good thing because that means you can blend the amount of the affected signal with the dry signal really effectively. Inserts, on the other hand, don't work that way. Insert sends the entire signal from that channel out through the device, usually a compressor, maybe an outboard EQ, and then it sends it right back into the channel. So it's actually inserting that device in line in that channel, so the signal all goes through that device. So unless the device itself has a blend option on it, everything going through that device or that channel is being affected by what you've got connected to the inserts on the console. That's the reason you wouldn't use an insert for something like a reverb. In general, you're going to want to use time-based effects like delays and reverbs with an AUG send, and you'll use things like EQ and compression on an insert. This is just a cool picture I took with a really wide-angle lens of the Soundtrack's Topaz recording console. I'm going to show you the AUG send section on the Topaz here in just a second. 
and this console is a really good example. I like the layout of this console. It's a good size too. Still had to use the wide angle lens to really get it all in the picture, but I think it looks cool. Here is a good example of auxiliary sins on a recording console. This is the Soundtracks Topaz Aug sins on the channels. You've got auxiliary one that's dedicated to the channel, and then you've got aux two that's dedicated to the monitor. These are both pre-fader aux sins. Then you've got aux three through six, which can be switched either, they're normally in the main channel path, but they can be switched to the monitor path by using these two MON buttons here. They can also be changed between three and five with this button and four and six with this button. These are all post fader aux sends on the Soundtracks Topaz. So you can think of auxiliary sends as a way to take a signal that's on a channel and send it to somewhere else. It's also kind of like having another mixer within a mixer because each of the aux sends, like auxiliary one, whatever you send to that auxiliary send master is going to be blended with the other things that you send from the other channels on aux one. So it's like another mini mixer, mixer within a mixer for the auxiliaries. Since we talked a lot about headphone mixes, I thought I'd show the studio section and control room section of the Soundtracks Topaz. The studio section here, in my case, I have this wired to the headphone amp, so I can combine the main mix, the monitor mix, whatever selected over here in the control room, including the two-track tape inputs, and AUGS 1 or 2. So that means I have a pre-fader AUG send here, from either the main channel or the monitor channel that I can combine with the main mix or the monitor mix to send to the headphone amp. Of course, I can also take these individual aux send outputs on the console and wire those to separate headphone amps or you know something like that. On the topic of inserts, another important thing to take note of is that subgroups on most consoles have inserts. So normally, the insert is gonna affect everything on the signal, 100% of that is going to run out to that device and back into the insert. But if you want to blend in an insert type effect like a compressor, you can send the channel signal straight from here to the left right bus, so there's your dry signal, then you can send it to a bus here, and you can use the insert on the bus for your compressor or insert effect. Then you can combine the two signals just have to make sure you also send the signal from the bus with the insert effect to the left right mix and then you can vary the amount of dry signal versus the insert effect signal well i hope you found that informative and maybe slightly educational if you didn't know much about how the traditional analog signal flow in the recording studio used to work and sometimes still works. Maybe you knew some of it, maybe you picked up a few things. Well, at least I hope you enjoyed it. And I really appreciate you watching. Thanks so much to all my new subscribers. I'm gonna keep making cool videos. In the next video for this series, I'm gonna talk more about the hybrid mixing workflow and why you would wanna use that as opposed to mixing all in the box. So I hope that you all have an excellent day, night, evening, hour, minute, second, nanosecond, whatever it is you're having, have a good one. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're already a subscriber, spread the word. Tell your friends. Thanks so much.